SpaceX's new Starship 2.0 will be unveiled at the beginning of the Artemis mission. SpaceX is finally progressing towards a fully functional prototype of the Starship, which is the spacecraft that will carry humans to Mars. This development follows years of iterative design adjustments and redesigns. SpaceX is working hard to make the science fiction vision of a human settlement on Mars a reality. The company is working on a 100-seat spaceship named Starship and a massive rocket dubbed Super Heavy. This will be a part of a transportation system Musk believes will make further colonization possible. You see, when Musk first announced his concept, he outlined a simple plan, a massive spaceship mounted on an enormous rocket that can be used again and over again. So basically, the rocket will send the spacecraft into Earth orbit and then the rocket will return to Earth for a vertical propulsive landing. Meanwhile, the ship will travel across the space on its route to Mars from Earth. There is no need to send separate landing ships or take off vehicles to these extraterrestrial worlds because the vessel can perform both. So, it is essential to Musk's plan that the spacecraft be able to refuel in space rather than on Earth. For instance, spaceships traveling back from home from Mars or the Moon will need to have their propellant supplies refilled on those worlds using materials that were manufactured there. And in 2016, Musk referred to this framework as the Interplanetary Transport System. The billionaire had previously called his idea the Mars Colonial Transporter. He previously said that a stack of ITS will reach a height of 400 feet. The rocket, which is 254 feet tall, will provide the most extra height to the ship's 162 feet, and the overall height won't be 416 feet since there will be an overlap between the two when stacking. The next-generation Raptor engine developed by SpaceX will propel both vehicles. Nine Raptor engines will be installed on the ITS ship, while 42 will be installed on the booster's 40-foot width. As a result, the rocket can generate 13,033 tons of force during launch, which is 3.6 times more than NASA's Saturn V-Moon rocket could muster. Also, there will be more than one ITS ship and booster in operation. Every 26 months, a fleet of spacecraft carrying a thousand people or more will be launched to Mars to carry out the ultimate plan. And with this, a metropolis of a million people may be built on Mars within the next 50 to 100 years. However, Musk did not create any blueprints or designs for the construction of this metropolis. He claimed that would occur naturally as more and more people settled on Mars. His analogy was to the Transcontinental Railroad, which in the 19th century allowed people to go westward from the east and midwest. Now, if all goes according to plan, it's not simply the ultra-wealthy who will be among these pioneers. As the ITS is designed to be reused, it may help reduce the cost of a journey to Mars, making it more accessible to the masses. And even though Musk has made several changes to the system's architecture and terminology over the past three years, the overarching concept has remained the same. For instance, in 2017, he declared that ITS will henceforth be referred to as the BFR, which is an acronym for Big Falcon Rocket. The BFR was a smaller, lighter, and more compact version of its forerunner. And when stacked, it has a height of 348 feet and a width of 30 feet and is powered by just 31 Raptor engines on the rocket and 6 on the spacecraft. However, the most notable modification included the introduction of the rocket ship. Musk stated that SpaceX would use the BFR for all of its future space travel requirements, and its many applications range from launching satellites to transporting humans to and from Mars to clearing up orbital debris. Over time, SpaceX plans to retire its Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy rockets and its Dragon passenger and cargo spacecraft. Musk also said that by increasing the BFR's scope in this way, the system will become cheaper for SpaceX to build and construct. The BFR concept then expanded, almost restoring the system to its initial height. Musk announced in September 2018 that the combined height of the two rocket spaceships would be 387 feet. 
In addition to the previously announced 6 Raptors, the BFR ship will now have 7 and 4 adjustable fins, 2 in the vehicle's nose and 2 larger ones at its tail. The spacecraft has these fins to land safely on planets with substantial atmospheres like Mars and Earth. Moreover, the two tail fins and a stylized leg resembling a fin can be used as landing pads. The BFR was abandoned after only two months and Musk revealed that the system's new name is Starship. And even though the massive rocket will launch designated Super Heavy, the spacecraft will go by the same name. At that time, SpaceX still intends to construct a carbon fiber Starship vehicle. Nonetheless, Musk said in January 2019 that he was converting to stainless steel. Steel is somewhat heavier than carbon fiber, but has superior thermal characteristics and is significantly less expensive. Since then, he has praised the material swap as the finest design move made thus far on the IDS-BFR-Starship project. Musk said in May 2019 that the Starship vehicle would only have 6 Raptors instead of 7, and sometime later, he tweeted that instead of 31, Super Heavy would have 35 Raptors. As a result, on September 28, 2019, Musk gave a presentation from SpaceX's facility in South Texas, not far from the sleepy fishing community of Boca Chica, detailing the newest design updates. And although there were minor engine updates, the billionaire did not reveal any major alterations. Super Heavy can now carry 37 Raptors, although not all of them will be used on every flight. Also, the booster will likely need at least 24 Raptors for each mission. Previously, Musk placed the Starship project's entire development cost between $2 billion and $10 billion. Later, he clarified that SpaceX costs will be on the low end of that spectrum. Now, after liftoff, the rocket must propel the Starship crew capsule into geosynchronous orbit. Afterward, the rocket will separate and guide itself to a gentle landing on the launch pad. However, while this appeared impossible then, SpaceX rockets have effectively achieved this goal for years. And so, the next step calls for the launcher to pick up a fuel tanker and launch it into orbit alongside the main ship. The Starship's fuel tank will restock supplies before continuing on to Mars. After taking off, this ship will use solar panels to collect sunlight for propulsion. Musk envisions that these spaceships and their crews will remain in Earth orbit until a planetary alignment brings Mars closer to Earth. The opportunity arises every 26 months. SpaceX's ultimate goal is to launch a fleet of hundreds of spacecraft to Mars. The ability to reuse the boosters is crucial to the success of the overall concept. Musk's strategy is based on constructing spacecraft that can be recycled several times, and he claims that the reusable infrastructure is essential for a Mars colony's self-sufficiency. According to SpaceX's projections, each rocket booster may be used a thousand times each tanker 100 times, and any spacecraft at least 12 times. Also, each spacecraft would likely transport fewer than 100 passengers on the initial voyages. However, projections show that figure will rise to over 200 in the not too distant future. Moreover, an estimated 40 to 100 years after the first Martian mission would be needed to successfully colonize the Red Planet with 1 million people. Since the rockets may be fired again and again, the ships can return to Earth anytime it is necessary, and human settlement on Mars can begin once a few unmanned cargo supply missions have landed on the Red Planet. Now, before we continue, I'd like to thank you for getting this far. And if you want to know about the hurdles the program is facing, then make sure to watch till the end. Let's now talk about the hurdles SpaceX is facing. You see, the Red Planet's very thin atmosphere is one of the major obstacles in the way. In fact, NASA had to take extra precautions since the Curiosity rover weighs just 2,000 pounds, which is only a fraction of the overall cargo that demand emissions will transport. Because of this, SpaceX keeps working to improve its hypersonic vintage rocket system. And this reusable technique is necessary so that 
an extremely heavy spacecraft may be eased into the Martian atmosphere and sunk to the surface. However, that's not all of it. The process of entering the atmosphere is another. The ship must be able to refuel and return to Earth to begin again after withstanding the high temperatures experienced during entry and landing, and dropping supplies and establishing a propellant depot on the planet during the first few flights will likely be all that is done on those missions. Humans can colonize Mars once all the supply missions have been made. The first team will rely on subterranean drilling to unearth buried ice, and this will serve as the colony's water supply, generating electricity for the whole colony. As soon as the necessary crews of scientists and engineers have settled in, the race will begin for the first available seats on the ships that will transport eager colonists to the newly colonized planet. SpaceX's future goals rely heavily on the Raptor engine's efficiency which is at the heart of every new rocket the company deploys. And so, the firm continuously enhances the engine's effectiveness and reusability through a series of updates. SpaceX has been using two versions of this engine, the newest of which is the Raptor 2. Raptor 2 has been updated with what the manufacturer claims are significant enhancements in speed and dependability over its predecessor. Raptor engines use superchilled liquid oxygen and superchilled liquid methane in a complete flow stage combustion cycle. And SpaceX's next generation spaceship Starship will now be powered by the pair. The Raptor engine uses the extremely beneficial FFSCC cycle, which maximizes the impulse generated by a given amount of fuel. This engine is the first of just three FFFSCC designs to ever make it past the prototype stage. Furthermore, the Starship is still undergoing development and research, and SpaceX just announced that the new vehicle prototype had a successful static fire test of its engines. On September 19, SpaceX tested the performance of its Starship Super Heavy prototype by launching it with seven of its engines. The business has never tested this many of its brand new Raptor engines all at once before. SpaceX has also been performing increasingly rigorous static fire tests in anticipation of Starship's first orbital mission. This specific static fire test lasts around 10 seconds, which is about the same as revving a car engine and then putting it in neutral. The FAA still needs to issue SpaceX a launch authorization for the first orbital test flight of Starship. In June, the firm successfully completed an environmental study, removing a significant obstacle. Therefore, launch can proceed, but hundreds of changes to the mission plan are needed. The Starship will lift off from Starbase, travel briefly into orbit, and then return to Earth via a splashdown, landing in the Pacific once SpaceX receives the necessary approvals from government agencies. Super Heavy will then break away from Starship soon after liftoff in an effort to land on a repurposed drilling rig in the Gulf of Mexico. Now, Everything here sets the stage for Starship to become a part of NASA's Artemis program, not only because of its inescapable role in delivering humans to Mars. And by 2025, this plan hopes sending humans back to the lunar surface. So, what do you think of SpaceX's Starship 2.0 and its plans to send humans to Mars? Let me know what you think in the comments section below. And while you're at it, make sure to smash the like and subscribe buttons as well. Now, if you want to know about SpaceX's Starbase, then make sure to click and watch this video right here and enjoy! And that's the end of this video guys. See you next time!